Pluto is said to have been discovered in 1930. From 1930 to 2006, we have been taught that there are nine planets in our so-called solar system. In 2006, Pluto was stripped of its planetary status, meaning since 2006, the International Astronomical Union officially recognizes eight planets. Well, what if I told you that there are only seven planets, including the moon and the sun, and not including Earth? What if I told you that this deception has been hidden right under our noses all along? Let's have a look at our calendar week. Sunday equals, you guessed it, Sunday. Monday equals Moon Day. Tuesday equals Mars Day. Wednesday equals Mercury Day. Thursday equals Jupiter Day. Friday equals Venus Day. Saturday equals Saturn Day. These are the original seven planets encoded in our weekdays. Let's have a look at the etymology of planet. It tells you how basically the planets are wandering stars. And if you look down here on the bottom, it says, so-called because they have apparent motion, unlike the fixed stars, originally included also the moon and sun. The ancient Greeks considered the planets to be wandering stars. Their chart has Earth, which wasn't considered a planet, in the center, with the seven planets circuiting around it in the following order. Moon, Mercury, Venus, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, and then Saturn in the outermost ring. If you look one ring past Saturn, you'll see the firmament, also known as the crystalline heaven, which contains all the stars. Here's an Egyptian system with the same seven planets going around Earth. In Aleister Crowley's book, 777, he repeatedly wrote about the seven planets, including the sun and moon, constantly connecting them with seven alchemical metals and seven days of the week. If you look at the Sefer Yetzirah, the Book of Creation, which is the oldest known Kabbalistic text, it has tons of references to seven. Kind of like the Bible, some parts of the Bible anyway. Seven archangels, seven seals, and if you look at chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Seven planets in the universe, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Sun, Venus, Mercury, Moon. Seven days in the year the seven days of the week, seven gates in the souls, male and female, two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, and a mouth. In chapter 4, verse 15, it says, Seven universes, seven lands, seven seas, seven rivers, seven deserts, seven days, seven weeks, seven years, seven sabbaticals, seven jubilees, and the holy palace. Therefore he made sevens, beloved under all the heavens. Chapter 4 in this book is mostly about the number 7, and in this particular version of the Sefer Yetzirah that I'll be linking in the description, on page 187, it goes on explaining the seven firmaments, the seven earths, meaning seven continents, and so on. I found that interesting. 33rd degree Freemason Manly P. Hall wrote quite a bit about the seven planets in his most famous book entitled The Secret Teachings of All Ages. I'll read you a couple things. The seven wonders of the world, while apparently designed for diverse reasons, were actually monuments erected to perpetuate the arcana of the mysteries. They were symbolic structures placed in peculiar spots and the real purpose of their erection can be sensed only by the initiated. Alifus Levy has noted the marked correspondence between these seven wonders and the seven planets. The seven wonders of the world were built by widows' sons in honor of the seven planetary genii. Their secret symbolism is identical with that of the seven seals of Revelation and the seven churches of Asia. Pythagoras, according to some authorities, divided the universe into nine parts, according to others, into twelve parts. The twelvefold system was as follows. 
The first division was called the Empyrean, or the Sphere of the Fixed Stars, and was the dwelling place of the Immortals. The second to twelfth divisions were, in order, the Spheres of Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, the Sun, Venus, Mercury, and the Moon, and Fire, Air, Water, and Earth. This arrangement of the seven planets, the sun and moon being regarded as planets in the old astronomy, is identical with the candlestick symbolism of the Jews. The sun in the center as the main stem, with three planets on either side of it. And that's just a couple of examples about the seven planets in Manly P. Hall's The Secret Teachings of All Ages. Another aspect of this Seven Planets idea for me was looking at a couple articles about how Uranus isn't a planet and about how Neptune shouldn't be considered if Pluto isn't. This gives a bit more credence to my line of thinking, but I'll admit that this is all just personal speculation on the subject. Since I've been able to see the Flat Earth as the truth, I've also come to understand that Earth was never meant to be considered a planet. In fact, it's a planate which means plain or flat surface. Earth wasn't considered a planet until the 16th or 17th century, so it's all fairly new. Whether Uranus, Neptune, or even Pluto are actually planets or not doesn't really matter. The thing is that Earth is not a planet. We don't live on a wandering star. We live on Earth, which is nothing more than land, because the water is not included in the word Earth. What we witness above us in the night skies are the planets, the wandering stars, the luminaries, moving about while the stars move uniformly in circuits, contrary to the wandering stars. When this information presented itself to me, I felt compelled to touch on the subject. So, thanks for watching. Until next time. ¿Es que no sabéis que el universo es un arca gigante? El cielo es la tapa y la tierra es el suelo. A este idiota aún no le han dicho que la tierra es redonda. La tierra es plana. Tu cabeza es plana. Lee las escrituras. Si la tierra fuera redonda, ¿por qué no caen al abismo los hombres de abajo? ¿Eh? ¿Y los que están a los lados? ¿Por qué no resbalan? Pensad sobre eso. <risa> Davo lo sabe. Eh, hermano, ¿tú qué dices? ¿La tierra es plana o es redonda? Solo Dios sabe esas cosas.